Hey guys, welcome to That's My Team Thursday. Today we are repping our teams. I am showing off the Jacksonville Jaguars because I am a fan. I've been a fan forever, even though um, it's almost always a rebuilding year. I'm okay with that. Uh, this could be our year. You never know. Um, so uh, with that, we're praying for um, all of the athletes and teams and just um, people even who have jobs that are um, lost because of the uh, pause and play um, due to the coronavirus. So let's pause and pray for that and then we'll get started. Dear Jesus, I come before you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for uh, these students. I pray for those of uh, students that are athletes. I know that they're just uh, missing their sports right now, wishing they were able to be out with their teams and out um, playing and just honoring you um, on their field or court or wherever they're at, Lord. Um, just ask that you be with them, just um, help them to be able to continue to excel at their sports, Lord, and just uh, allow them to just be able to uh, use this time wisely, Lord. I pray for the professional athletes, Lord, and those affected by the coronavirus. I thank you, Lord, that so many of them are stepping up in big ways to help others that are being impacted by this and that um, people are just realizing that it's worth it to sacrifice um, for the good of so many. So I just thank you for the sacrifices that people are making during this time. I pray that you be with any other prayer requests, Lord. You know the things in our heart. We thank you for that, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Alrighty, so today we are going to be talking about safety on the road. Um, so we're going to go over our to-dos and then uh, get into it. So to-do, number one, watch the safety on the road video. Uh, you guys are already doing that. And tomorrow, um, because today you don't have anything to do besides watch this video, you're going to read an article and complete the activity that comes with that article. So just gave you that as a foreshadowing because you won't have a video from me tomorrow. You'll only have the announcement. So if you want to come back to this video tomorrow, you can. Um, if not, you can just read through it because all the information will be on the portal. So objectives. What are our objectives today? We're going to examine bicycle safety, safety on mopeds, and that should say motorcycles. Sorry, guys. Um, motorcycles. Then we're going to examine motor vehicle safety and look at links between alcohol driving and then analyze ways to avoid drinking and driving. So let's get to it. Bicycles. When you are riding a bicycle, you always want to use the proper hand signals. Here our girl is uh, signalizing them to us. If you're doing left arm, you just stick your left arm out. Um, if you are using your left arm and you need to do right turn, you can do this one or you can just do the right turn. If your arm goes down, that means you're stopping or slowing down. Um, you want to stop at intersections and look for cars. You want to ride on the right hand side of the street or in the bicycle lane. Uh, you want to ride single file with other riders. You also want to watch for hazards. You want to use caution when um, you're passing driveways. And you want to avoid riding at dusk. So now I'll tell you all my scary bicycle story. Um, actually, it's a moped story. So maybe it goes on the next page. Actually, I'm going to tell you now because the next page we have something else. Um, you always want to be careful when you're riding on those. Um, I went to Aruba when I was 19 and uh, we got mopeds and I'm like feeling good driving around this beautiful island. And I remember I came around the corner and when I came around the corner, this is a mountainous area. So it's like an uphill corner. And I came around the corner and all of the cars in front of me were stopped. Well, I'm on my moped. I was going pretty quick and I knew I did not have time to stop. So my first thought was like, I'm going to get off of this thing. So I started to jump off while well, my body was coming off. And as I did that, I was like, oh, no, if I jump off, my moped's going to run into this car in front of me. That's not good. So I decided to hang on and break with the handlebars. So um, my legs got dragged on the ground behind me. I still ran into a car, broke off the mirror of the thing. And uh, I, I got hurt. I, I mean, I was OK. I didn't have to go to a hospital. So my fixed me up but um yeah be careful with those too make sure you use caution go slow pay attention to where you're going so um mopeds and bicycles it's really important to wear a helmet i was wearing a helmet in that situation so um i was okay um but in a motor ac motorcycle accident you're actually 37 percent more likely to reduce your risk of brain injury if you are wearing a helmet you also want to wear protective gear so that's wearing like thick leather um, take a defensive riding course. If you ever ride on a motorcycle, I'm kind of terrified of them. I don't know that I ever will. Um, you want to make sure that um, you take a defensive riding course because 75% of multi-vehicle motorcycle 
crashes are caused by another driver. So they didn't see you, you were in their blind spot. So if you know how to avoid that, um, you have a chance of surviving a lot better. So to the right, you'll notice that we have um, some pictures over here. And this is a young man named Brad Sutton. He actually used to be one of my students. And um, he was one of those students that he was really funny, made me laugh all the time, but he kind of drove me crazy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, I loved Brad very dearly, but I do remember a time that uh, he made me cry because he was being so, oh. and years later, he actually came back and apologized to me and said he had found Christ. And that was like a really cool thing to see. Um, well, just a few years ago, um, after Hurricane Irma, uh, Brad was out riding his motorcycle and um, he was involved in an accident. And fortunately for Brad, he was wearing a helmet and um, some protective gear, so he did survive the accident. But um, as you can see from this bottom picture, it was not without... Um, it was, it was really due to the grace of God. Um, God did a miracle in um, saving his life. Um, today, Brad is paralyzed from the waist down, but it's something that he hasn't let limit him, and it's something that he hasn't let ruining, ruin his life. It's something where he was a very athletic guy, and it could have been that thing that he decided he would mope and uh, be upset about it. But rather than doing that, he's used this to share his faith with others and talk to others about the goodness of God and the fact that um, God did let him live and the fact that he did survive that. And um, so he's just an inspiration to me of uh, being able to see how he took something that was so scary and something that was horrible and, you know, really losing the loss of your legs. Like, I, I can't imagine. And it's something that could be hard. I know a lot of you athletes are upset because you can't play your sports temporarily because of the coronavirus. So there's things that he can't do now ever again because of that. Um, but um, Brad is still choosing to live a happy life and he's working out and he um, he actually posted a video the other day of him actually doing like these little numbers. I don't know what they're called. I should know like kind of like the opposite of pull-ups but like push-ups on a bar and he was actually wearing his um, wheelchair like attached to him so he could do it with the weight of his wheelchair as well which was really cool but um just goes to show that um wearing a helmet saved his life um and it's it's really important um to do that so motor vehicles um motor vehicle crashes are actually the leading cause of accidental death in the united states um there are three main types of distractions that a driver can have. The number one is visual tasks. So that's anything that causes you to take your eyes off of the road. Um, the second is manual tasks. So that's when you have to touch something that's taking your um, hands off the steering wheel. And the last is cognitive tasks. So that's gonna take your mind away from what you are concentrating on the road and on to do that. That's why um, cell phones are super dangerous because they require all three. You are thinking about what's on your cell phone. You are looking at your cell phone and you're actually touching your cell phone. So that's something that is very um, dangerous. Um, things, even things like changing the radio, if you get too caught up into it, um, can cause a problem with that. People in the car next to you can be one of those types of distractions. So you want to be really careful with that. Um, so we just talked about how cell phones are dangerous. There are actually 1.6 million crashes caused annually due to cell phone use while driving um, to from the National Safety Council. That is a huge number of crashes that wouldn't be caused otherwise. Um, that's scary. And one out of every four accidents are caused by cell phone usage. That's just what we know. There's a lot of people that lie, so um, it could be more than that. And 80% of car crashes are attributed to a driver being distracted or not paying attention. Um, I also have a scary motor vehicle um, story that um, really for me, was one of the defining moments of my life. When I was 16, um, we had just returned from cheer camp and we were um, driving to go get some ice cream. And uh, me and my boyfriend were sitting in the back seat and his best friend and his girlfriend were up in the front seat. And I remember I was sitting in the back and I was in the middle bench seat of a Jeep and I couldn't find the seatbelt because they get stuck underneath. And so my boyfriend was like, you really should put one on. And I was like, ah, no, it's fine. You'll be my seatbelt, just joking. And um, so we were driving down the road and the driver, he accidentally went off the road a little bit. And his girlfriend was, she like, she was a little ditzy. I love her to death, we're still friends. But um, she screamed because she was scared and um, he kind of laughed about it. So 
we're going further down the road. And my boyfriend was like, no, you really need a seatbelt. And I was like, it's fine. And so he took his seatbelt off and he leaned across me to try to get mine. And about that time, the driver said, watch this and jerked the wheel because he was going to go off the wheel road a little bit to scare her and then come back on. Well, when he did that, the car hit sand. And instead of him being able to gain traction on the ground, because we were now on a new type of ground um, and get back to the road, we actually um, ran straight into a tree and hit the tree and then went backwards. And um, I remember right after it happened, I was sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, this can't be real, this can't be real. And the car was all crunched up and there was smoke coming from the engine. So I remember um, my friend in the front, she was she was screaming and crying. The driver, he was screaming in pain and my boyfriend was knocked out. And um, where I was sitting, I was in the center and if he would not have been leaned against me, I would have flown through the center, hit the tree and gone through the windshield and died. And um, instead, he pushed me this way, my head ran into the seat back of the car in front of me and he went through the center and hit his head on like the dash area. So I remember thinking, I've got to get out of this car, it could catch on fire. So my friend couldn't get out and I was not strong enough, in theory, shouldn't have been able to because the car frame was bent, bent. but we talked about that adrenaline girls and um, that kicked in. And so I was able to open the car door and bend the frame and climb out the back and I did that and then I pulled my boyfriend out of the car who was um, quite a bit bigger than me and um, he I ended up being okay I had some nerve damage and um, my eyebrow was stuck down like this for a few months which was really weird um, and I broke some ribs but other than that way I was fine my boyfriend on the other hand um, he should have died that night it was by the grace of God that he didn't um, he had to have surgery and he had four metal plates put into his um, forehead to hold that up. His nose was broken and they had to um, repair that. To this day, he can't, well, maybe he can now, but he couldn't smell and taste a lot of stuff. He may now. I haven't talked to him about that in years. Um, but God really did a miracle saving him. The driver broke his femur and it was all because he was trying to be funny and trying to be silly. And it's something that's super um, sad to look back on, but motor vehicles are something that are dangerous. So always be careful. I am, um, always wear a seatbelt as a result of that. I do not get in a car without a seatbelt. Um, if your car doesn't have one, I won't ride in it. Um, and I'm also very wise about who I let drive me now as a result of that. Alrighty, so moving on, alcohol and driving. Um, I remember that night the police officer asked if we'd been drinking and I was very naive at the time and I was like, we would never do that. And he actually hadn't been, but um, this is something that's very dangerous too. Um, here's some facts, every day 29 people in the U.S. die in motor vehicle crashes that involve an alcohol impaired dryer, which is one death every 50 minutes. So that's sobering to think about. Um, that one's the biggest one that stands out to me, um, just the fact that something that shouldn't happen like that. I actually have a friend that, um, he wasn't a friend, I went to school with him, I guess we were more of acquaintances. He uh, was so drunk, he drove into a river and died with the passenger in the seat next to him. And she was so drunk that she just let it happen. And um, alcohol really impairs you. Um, so you've got to be careful with that. Um, here's ways to prevent drunk driving. Number one, don't drink. If you don't drink, it's not going to happen. Number two, um, if you are of age and you decide to consume it, you need to find a ride to where you're drinking and have a prearranged ride home. Call a taxi, Uber, Lyft, etc. cetera. Um, set up something with someone that, you know, no questions asked, they'll come and get you. Um, prayerfully, you know, your parents would rather you live than make a bad decision. Um, whatever you do, do not get behind the wheel of a car after consuming alcohol or anything that could impair your driving. Even drugs um, could do the same. And um, don't get behind the wheel or don't let someone get behind the wheel with you as well. So what's your assignment for tomorrow, guys? Um, you're going to read this article. Um, you're going to read through the 100 distracted driving facts. It sounds like a lot, but it's an easy read. And then answer the following questions. Make sure you use a different statistic for each one. None may be repeated. Which two are the scariest? Why? The most surprising? Why? the least surprising why, and which three do you think everyone should know and why. Um, good luck with this. If you have any questions, ask me. Once again, that's due tomorrow. Um, today, you're just watching this video, and uh, I love you guys. I'm praying for you, and I hope to hear from you or see you soon. Bye.